Welcome to naming and formula writing for hydrates. In this lesson, we're going to introduce what hydrates are, and then we're going to talk about how to name them and write formulas for them. So what are hydrates? Well, essentially, hydrates are ionic compounds, they're ionic salts, and we have an image over here that shows us the crystalline structure that ionic compounds form. You may remember seeing this from our video on ionic compounds. So hydrates are a particular kind of ionic compound uh, that's able to sort of trap water molecules inside this crystalline structure. So you can imagine that within these sort of cubic crystalline shapes, we have water molecules trapped inside, caged by the positive and negative ions of the salt. So we call these particular kinds of ionic compounds, or ionic salts, we call them hydrates, or hydrated salts. So let's look at how to name hydrated salts. To name the hydrate, we're going to name it in two pieces. First, we're going to name the ionic compound, the CuCl2 and the ZnSO4. And then we're going to look at how to deal with this dot H2O component. So to name CuCl2, uh, we know that this is copper 2 and this is chloride. So this is going to be copper 2 chloride for the ionic portion for the ionic portion of this hydrated salt and then we have to account for this 2H2O and you'll notice that the 2H2O has a little dot in front of it this dot is not like the dot in math it does not mean we multiply copper 2 chloride by two waters this dot really translates to contains it tells you how many water molecules are contained for each formula unit of copper 2 chloride. So how do we name this component? Well, we can agree that H2O is water, and the 2 tells us that we should use a prefix di. So for the name, because there are two waters, we say it's copper 2 chloride dihydrate. The hydrate indicates that there are water molecules contained in this ionic salt, and the dye tells us that there are two water molecules contained. So the full name for this is copper 2 chloride dihydrate. Let's name the second example. Zn is zinc. And SO4 we recognize as a polyatomic, and that's called sulfate. So we have zinc sulfate. Now we need to name the hydrated part of this ionic salt. So there are seven waters, which tells us we're going to use this prefix hepta for seven, which will name this component, the seven waters, as heptahydrate. So the overall name for this hydrated salt is zinc sulfate heptahydrate. Now that we've seen how to name the hydrate, writing the formula for a hydrate given the name is going to be a fairly straightforward task. So here we have copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. The first part of this is the name of the ionic compound, which we're going to treat like any other ionic compound. Copper 2 means we have copper 2 plus. The sulfate ion is SO4 2 minus. They join in a 1 to 1 ratio, which means the first part of this is CuSO4. For the next part, we want to name the pentahydrate. So penta is our prefix for 5, and hydrate tells us it's water, H2O. So the overall formula for this I'm going to put a dot next to the CuSO4 to indicate it's a hydrated salt. And I'm just going to write 5H2O. So this is my overall formula for copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. I began by naming the ionic salt and then identifying the number of waters based on this hydrate term in the name. Lastly, I used a dot to indicate that these waters are part of this hydrated salt. That wraps up our lesson on naming and formula writing for hydrated salts. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.